A Mexican-made player series Fender Stratocaster is a pretty good guitar for the money. Of course, you can always buy the American-made Strat, but you're going to have to pay a little bit more, almost double. So, is it worth paying the extra money for the American Strat? Well, let's find out. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, buy American which also pertains to guitars. Now, speaking of buying guitars, people often ask me what kind of guitars I like to buy, what brands, American brands. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy when it comes to guitars, to be honest with you. I like legacy brands, high quality brands, such as this one, or uh, another high quality brand, Fender which is the brand we're going to talk about today. Oh, we're not going to talk about acoustic guitars. Today, we're going to talk about an electric guitar, the Fender Stratocaster, made in the USA. So, welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where we take guitar reviews to the next level. It's called a Sienna Sunburst, American made. Um, American Professional 2 Stratocaster. How do we know it's uh, American Professional? Well, we can, uh, we're going to look at the specs, but uh, let's look at the tuners first. So, um, that's a giveaway. Staggered tuners. So, these two are a little bit taller than the rest of them. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Now, the fretboard. First, uh, we're just going to look at the relief. I'm not concerned if it's uh, set up correctly because you can change the setup. I want to know if uh, the eighth fret is uh, even because we're going to use it as a reference. So yes, yeah, so the fret rocker doesn't show any rocking. Now let's place the neck rest here. And I'm going to take a set of feeler gauges. Uh, we're going to take uh, these two, six one thousandths and eight one thousandths to check the relief on the eighth fret using a straight edge. So first on the base side, the first feeler gauge is going to be six one thousandths. It's this one. It passes through. The next one is eight one thousandths. I know the camera doesn't want to focus always, but uh, yeah, it does not pass through. However, I already measured the treble side and I can uh, show you that eight one thousandths does pass. All right, but then the next one does not. Okay, so this means that we have um, slightly uneven relief, slightly asymmetrical fretboard with six one thousandths relief on this side and eight one thousandths relief on the other side. This is not a defect. This is perfectly acceptable. It's fine. All right, so now we want to look at the nut. The nut slots, or if you want to call them the string slots, need to be cut as low as possible, but not below the fret level, right? So here we have the nut. Um, we can check it in a number of different ways, uh, basically by uh, pushing the strings down onto the second fret and checking the gap between the string and the first fret, the gap that remains, okay? So I like to use this dial indicator. Um, there doesn't have to be a gap. It could be absolute zero, but when I file the knot, I'm really happy when I get uh, two check marks, which uh, 
measures to be two one hundredths of a millimeter. That's a metric uh, dial indicator. So let's place it on top of the uh, first string first. And let's push down the string to uh, touch the second fret. And now let me turn the dial indicator a little bit. Let's push it down. So, so this gap is, uh, you know, I would say significantly higher than I would really want it to be. Uh, the B string shows a gap that's really high. The G, it's also really high. The D string, see, the D string is pretty much perfect. The A, acceptable, a little too high. And the E, too high for my taste. All right. So now, what we want to do next is um, inspect the nut through the microscope. Uh, here we are going to look at uh, the string slots from above and we want to make sure that the strings are well seated inside of the string slots. So let's do that. We're looking at the low E string. Uh, let's try to move the string a little bit. So this is well seated. I don't have any issues with that. There's a little clearance on the back end. The string moves a little bit. Uh, let's just remove the string and examine the string slot. Uh, well, okay. Uh, we can see here that um, the string made an impression at the front end here. So it was pushing down here. Then there was no pressure here and then it was pushing down there. And that's simply probably because um, the brake angle towards the tuning post was too severe. Like I said, it had too many wraps around. So let's put the string back. Now, just to remind you, I just want to uh, show you that uh, tuning post again. Here it is. Uh, too many wraps and a severe brake angle, which is why uh, we could see that the string damaged the back of the string slot uh, here a little bit uh, because there was too much pressure. We don't need a severe brake angle like this, okay? All right, so now I'm going to move um, the guitar so that we can see uh, the A string. The A string is uh, pretty tight here on the front end. Uh, let's, see, let's see if it's got a little clearance at the back end. Yeah, I don't have any issues with that. So let's remove the string. Okay. And let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm seeing. Uh, maybe, maybe we can see that there was a little bit of, of pressure here at the back end. So we can improve this if we file the back end of the string slot. Okay, so let's move on to the D string. So I'm not sure what I'm seeing here. Let me focus. So it seems like the string was a little bit damaged somehow. Uh, let's see how tight it is at the front end. Yeah, it's pretty good. And at the back end, there's a little clearance. Now let's uh, just remove the string. Not sure what happened there. Okay. So, uh, well, it seems like we have some string binding. Uh, well, I want to show you uh, from this angle. I'm trying to pull on the string and it's not coming up. Did you hear that? 
So we heard a little click and now let's see through the microscope. Okay, so that's not good. Okay, if we uh, look from this angle again, I'm not really sure what is happening. Uh, I'd like to have a closer look through the lens of this camera. This I've never seen before. Okay, so let's have a look at the string. So here I'm trying to lift the string and clearly it gets caught. Very interesting. So uh, we have some kind of issue that uh, I guess we can fix. But as you recall, the D string slot was already filed low, so we need to be careful. Uh, let's move over to the G string. So here we're looking at the G string. We're zoomed in. Uh, it's nice and tight at the front end. There is just the right amount of clearance at the back end. Let's remove the string and look at the string slot. Okay, it's easily removable. Uh, it comes out easily. But um, it seems like this string slot was cut with a V shape file. Okay, so we have uh, two impressions on the two sides of the string slot. Um, yeah, we see the uh, metal residue on, on both sides, but no metal residue at the very bottom. So here we have a situation um, that um, the string is, the round string is seated in a V-shaped string slot. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what kind of file was used, but this is what we see. Okay, let's move to the B string. Let me zoom out a little bit. So it's, uh, okay, it's nice and tight. And it's got a, a little clearance. Let me remove it from the string tree. And, okay, so it seems like a similar situation. So the string slot looks like uh, it's probably V-shaped. It's got the right amount of clearance at the back, so it's sloped downwards. But I can see two impressions on the, on, on the two sides, okay? And now the E string. Well, uh, here, we actually see some some damage at the back end of the knot. It's uh, chipped off. Okay, this uh, is not uh, great. Uh, yeah, there's a... Uh, hmm. I don't know what to make of it, but it seems like the knot has been damaged. Let's uh, remove the string from the string tree there. And okay, so we know the string slot is too high. We want to file it down all the way across and we want to slope it at the back. Um, yeah, but we're going to have to have a, a closer look at this um, damage. Okay, um, we might as well do it now. Let's uh, use this camera because I'll be able to rotate and look at an angle. 
So here we can see um, that it is in fact damaged. This is what it looks like. And it is fixable. We can uh, build up the material a little bit using perhaps dental composites. Now, since we're here, I'd like to uh, inspect this a little bit closer. This is uh, the G string. Um, so, as it's uh, rotating, we can see, in fact, that it is cut more like a V as opposed to the letter U. Okay, V as in victory or Victoria. And let's examine this. As you recall, we have some string binding on this string. So let's see how it snaps. Okay, let's look at it again. Okay, not ideal. Now, um, we have uh, a situation. So this guitar has never been played. Uh, the customer brought it in for a setup. Um, we're going to have to figure out if he wants to return it or exchange it or if he perhaps just wants me to fix it. Um, I'd like to show you the guitar from above. There are a few uh, other appointments I want to discuss. Once again, it's a maple fretboard, SSS. That means single, single, single pickup. Uh, or maybe it's SSS this way, I don't know. Volume, tone, and push, push here for tone. Okay, five-way switch, output jack two-point bridge plate, okay? On this side, skunk stripe. Well, that's because um, it's, a, it's a maple fretboard. So this is not a fretboard that's been glued onto uh, the neck. It is part of the neck. And of course, we have a truss rod, so the only way to install it is to route out a channel, install it from this side, and then plug it. That's a walnut, yeah? Uh, here we have a relief cut, and here we have an adjustment for micro tilt. That is going to be a one eighth of an inch wrench, which is for the Fender guitar. So. It fits inside and we can turn it so that we can tilt the neck. Why do we want to tilt the neck? Well, um, on, on the saddles, when we do a setup, let me show you. We want to make sure that um, the height adjustment screws don't stick up out you know because then when we when we play it would scratch the hand so we achieve that by raising the saddles but we don't want the saddles to be too high because we don't want the strings to be too high so uh, in that case we can tilt the neck or we can tilt the neck first which is how it's done and then adjust the saddles um, we want to look at the truss rod it is the Fender Biflex truss rod. I haven't looked at it yet. It uses the same wrench, which is uh, one eighth of an inch. It goes inside like this. So it's, it's a Fender specific wrench, okay? This is longer. At a hardware store, you can buy one eighth of an inch uh, Allen key, but it's not going to fit all the way inside. So what I'm curious to know is with the correct relief, which we measured, is it tight? Okay, it's, it's somewhat tight. 
Yeah, okay, good. All right, so this is good, very good. All right, no issues with the truss rod. I'm going to remove the strings. We're gonna look uh, under the pick guard and perhaps we can look at other things. Oh yeah, we wanna look at the frets with the strings off. That's next. We're not done yet, uh, but before we continue, I'd like to point out the obvious. If you ever want to buy a guitar, uh, just make sure you check the uh, Guitar Quackery YouTube channel to see if there's a review of it uh, for guitar reviews such as the review you're watching as we speak, which, uh, let's face it, is the kind of a review you're not going to find on any other YouTube channel. Uh, unless they start copying guitar quackery. Okay, so uh, if you want YouTube to recommend this kind of content to you in the future, just make sure you click the like button. And if you want to help others, make sure you click the share button. This way others can benefit from this kind of content as well. And it also helps the channel grow. And if you want to further help the channel grow, there are some easy things you can do. The easiest thing you can do is to make sure you don't skip the ads, because if you skip the ads, this channel does not get any ad money, okay? But if you feel that you want to contribute, you can do that as well. There's a super thanks button below. Uh, there's a link that says, buy me a coffee, thank you. And there's a link to buy Guitar Quackery merch. And also there's a link to the Patreon page. So, oh, speaking of Patreon, I'm currently developing content for Patreon. Okay, so there will be exclusive content for some Patreon supporters on Patreon. Um, such as perhaps this video, there might be a follow-up video to this one with a happy ending. Uh, no, I, I didn't mean it that way. I meant, you know, well, I think you know what I meant. Uh, all right, so let's now have a closer look at that guitar. The strings are now completely loose. I have not looked at the electronics. I just loosened the strings and I removed all the screws. I'm going to look at this for the first time now. Let's have a look at uh, the frets first. So, uh, this is a Music Nomad neck rest. As you can see, it's very practical for uh, this work because I don't need to remove the strings and I have full access to the fretboard. I have not uh, checked the frets yet. Uh, I, I only checked the second fret and the eighth fret. I forgot to show you this in the previous uh, recording, but uh, it is not um, higher than the two adjacent frets. Uh, which is important when we use it as a reference point to measure uh, the string slots, right? So here, no rocking. Perfect. That's all perfect. Okay. So I am not detecting any uneven frets. Okay, so the entire fretboard is uh, true. There are no uneven frets on this fretboard. So this is very good. Okay, so now we want to remove uh, the pick guard. So now we put the strings back here. And perhaps I can show you from uh, above. I'm simply going to pull the pick guard out from underneath the strings, okay? Sometimes you need to remove uh, the neck if it has more of an overhang over the uh, pick guard on, you know, some strats, usually with uh, the rosewood uh, fretboard. So, here we go. Well, uh, very clean uh, wiring, okay? So I really have no uh, 
objections here. Okay, let's have a, a closer look uh, from uh, from this angle. Okay, so we we have a n n neatly wired uh, pickups, neat solder joints. Uh, this is called a treble bleed circuit, and here is that push push part that we talked about. So basically, that's a switch on the ins inside here. And yeah, and we have uh, uh, what are those parts? Are they CTS? What are they? Well, I don't know. So, uh, what else can I tell you? It's got this shielding. Uh, this is all very neat. Okay, so now let me put it back. There is one more. Uh, detail that I uh, I need to show you um, the frets are a little bit stubby but let me let me just put this back first so the strings are getting caught on the pole pieces okay okay and we can just put uh, maybe two screws to hold this down and then we'll be able to turn the guitar around so here we go two screws so I want to show you um, as much as I can show you that uh, the frets are a little bit uh, a little bit stubby on the sides. So what do I mean when I uh, when I go like this? Um, I can I can feel the the frets on the side. Now, they're not sharp, they just don't really feel very comfortable. And here, we'll look through the microscope, because I already examined the guitar, and we are going to see why. We're looking at the second fret, and as you can see, um, when they uh, filed, the fret ends uh, they also filed the wood a little bit okay and that's uh, well not exactly the best job okay it's same thing on the third fret and same thing on the fourth fret in fact it's the same throughout the entire fretboard uh, I can show you also on the other side. You can see how it's it's rolled off. Some of the wood uh, is filed down at an angle. Actually, it's sloping down. Let's go over to the second fret. First fret. Same thing. So any frets, I'm just going to randomly uh, examine uh, another fret. You can see here very clearly that uh, it's been filed, the wood, right? And perhaps on this one we can see if I focus. Okay. Same thing on this one. So. It is throughout the entire fretboard. We found imperfections. The guitar will be playable. I want to fix the nut. There's nothing I can do about the fret ends because there's missing material on the actual fretboard. But, you know, I already uh, talked to the customer and he says he can live with that. Um, he's going to have to make a decision about the nut. 
this was just a random guitar straight out of the box. It's never been played. A customer just bought a guitar, brought it to me for a setup, and um, as a rule, before I do any work on any guitars, I first look at everything. So I do a full assessment of the guitar, just to make sure that the customer is not sinking any money into a guitar that uh, might have other issues, like this one did. So, uh, obviously every Fender Stratocaster is not going to have these issues. It really depends who worked on it at the factory. So in this case, you know, it wasn't good. Uh, but I recommend it to the customer to simply do an exchange and then we'll do a setup on the new guitar. And uh, if that happens, I hope, uh, then we might make a follow-up video. Okay, so uh, uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.